Hey everyone, this is Josh from Before. I'm here with my Jazzwares Halo collection. Uh, if you watch the channel a lot, you might know I'm army building with the 4-inch Jazzwares Halo line. My plan for the army building is to eventually build out some pretty big uh, battle scenes, some big scale battle scenes that I, uh, I can photograph. And while I'm still a ways away uh, from having quite the uh, the numbers that I that I need to, to fill out these battle scenes, I'm starting to accumulate a lot of stuff. And and the issue I'm having is okay, where 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 can I put all this stuff? It's oddly irregularly shaped and sized, you know. So I've started like I I use these totes. These they're not totes. They're like little um, they're to go boxes that you can get in bulk. So I've got these crammed full. I've got three of these things crammed full of just figures. I've got another one full of loose, odd-shaped accessories. I've got another one full of the little dio bases and some flight stands. Both of these crates are completely full of weapons. I've got mongoose, I've got mongeese. Stuff still in the box here that needs to uh, get put together and consolidated with everything else and it's just like okay what do I do with this stuff so what I did was I got a Black Friday deal on this big toolbox toolboxes are kind of expensive and I hate paying that much money for them but I got a good deal on this it's a big DeWalt toolbox that is going to become uh, the container that I that I keep all this stuff in but um, I'm not content to just keep this stuff in a off-the-shelf plain DeWalt toolbox, I want to transform this into a UNSC crate. So it's appropriately Halo themed, commemorate the release of Halo Infinite's campaign. So I want to, I want to paint this, I want to put some UNSC logos on this. You notice like this crate is gray and a lot of times in the games they're gray. I'm not going to go for game accurate, I'm going to use this olive primer and give it a similar color scheme to the Pelicans, Warthogs, all the UNSC military style gear. So it'll be this this olive primer and I got a satin white that I'll use to paint the stencil logos on. So let's take this out to the garage. I'm gonna put a coat of paint on it. All right, so I got this out here. You can see I've taped the handles and the latching hardware with painter's tape because I don't want to cover those. And I have a feeling this dark plastic is gonna be pretty thirsty and take a lot of paint to cover so which is yet another reason I'm glad I found this olive primer because I think it's gonna coat better okay now while that dries it's time to make the stencils I found these images online and just printed them out I'm gonna cut these it's gonna create some issues here in some of these pieces I'm gonna have to figure out how to cut out the black um, but these inside pieces keep them somehow uh, attached here I'll let you know what I figured out, but let's, for now, let's start cutting. All right, that was a total pain in the ass, but this is, I think, complete. You'll see, for some of these bits, I've left them kind of attached because they need to be floating in place here. Uh, and then what I'll do is, after the fact, I'll just go and touch up these little dots that aren't gonna get hit. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go put these bad boys on there. So I pulled the stencils off. You can see there was some bleeding under the edge of the stencils that, you know, that happens. So I'm gonna have to go back in and touch up with green all these little bleed spots. Maybe not all of them. It's okay if it's a little sloppy and, and we can pretend that some jarhead marine, you know, kind of hastily sprayed this on. And But the, the other thing I wanna cover is like, you can see I had to put little connective pieces so that the lettering would hang down. And now all these little spots here uh, and same with these little circles. I need to cover up those with white. So I got a little bit of touch up to do with green and white both. All right, so the paint's mostly dry. I pulled the tape off the handles. And if you take a close look, you can see that there's still uh, some spots that need touched up. I didn't get the blending perfectly on the green, like in the areas that I did touch up. Eventually I'll go back and clean those up a bit, but for me, this is good enough for right now. Sometimes on projects like this, perfect is the enemy of good. And I don't necessarily need this to just like take over my life for weeks at a time. You know, I could have gone in and maybe sanded this whole thing first so that it would accept the paint a little bit better. 
this this the stuff that this is made out of it's it's pretty pretty bad for for accepting paint you can even see sort of you know how it's bunched up like beaded up like that and this white is starting to crack a little bit but and there's even you know spots here that are where the paint chipped already and I covered it up and it's not perfectly blended but for now I'm gonna live with that I think this this gets the job done as it is and I'm ready to move on to the fun part and the fun part of course is going to be playing Tetris with all this stuff as we store it inside here so let's start laying stuff in warthog fits in there real snug which is great fits in there like that that's pretty badass gonna kind of put some loose stuff down here and you can see i've, I've bro broken those ghosts down so that they fit in there and i can just put them back together whenever i need them Crates are nice and cozy like so. All right, everything is in there pretty snug. I, I need to fit, find a way to break down the mantis and the shade turrets a little bit more because those are uh, a little irregularly shaped and making it hard to play perfect Tetris. And you see, I still I already have a couple more things that need to uh, be placed in here, but there's still room to grow. So, So this is working out. This is great. latch it back up and there you go so if you're if you're a toy collector at all then you know that space storage space and display space are difficult and can be expensive but you know if, if you're spending the time and the money on getting these toys spend the time and the money on coming up with fun creative solutions for for storage and display that that's my advice because if you don't have space to keep stuff it's hard to appreciate the things that you have. And so finding fun ways to, to give yourself a sense of order, it can be really important to getting as much enjoyment as possible out of the toys that you're collecting. And if you're a toy collector, like it or not, you are a hobbyist. So jump in and have some fun and, and come up with some fun creative ways to get the most out of your collecting. All right, everyone, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.